Many people know about the Colombian drug lord Pablo Escobar. Idolized by some and feared by many, Pablo Escobar had a lot of friends and well-wishers, but more enemies. But Pablo Escobar made the mistake of being enemies with very powerful people. Among these powerful enemies was the Cali Cartel. This criminal enterprise operated as a business and paid the top price for the greatest assassins, such as members of the SAS, Britain's top special forces outfit. Many former SAS troops struggled to leave their combat days behind. They discovered that they could continue their profession as mercenaries. Peter McAleese was one of them. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Why Pablo Escobar? Pablo Escobar was the boss of Colombia's Medellin narcotics cartel and one of history's richest criminals. He was the world's largest cocaine maker and distributor, accounting for as much as 80% of the drug's worldwide traffic at the time. Pablo Escobar was at the height of his authority in the 1980s. Escobar's Medellin cartel sold tons of cocaine to the United States and Europe, earning him a place on Forbes' list of the world's richest individuals. He didn't get there without creating some enemies along the way, though. Among them were the Cali Cartel's professional, suit-wearing drug lords. The Cali Cartel was a drug cartel located in southern Colombia, in the Valle del Cauca department in Cali. Gilberto and Miguel Rodriguez Orwella, brothers, as well as Jose Santa Cruz Londu, were the company's founders. When Helmer Pacho Herrera joined the cartel's four-man executive board in the late 1980s, they broke away from Pablo Escobar and his Medellin allies. During the Cali Cartel's rule from 1993 to 1995, they were credited with controlling over 80% of the global cocaine market, as well as being directly responsible for the expansion of the cocaine market in Europe, where they controlled 80% of the market. The Cali Cartel's international drug trafficking empire was worth $7 billion per year by the mid-1990s. Before the Cali Cartel rose to the heights it did, though, there was someone that they needed six feet underground. Yes, you guessed right. Pablo Escobar. Before the Cali cartel could move to the next level, they needed to take down a major rival, Pablo Escobar of the Medellin cartel. They intended to kill him, but they were up against an adversary who was both wealthy and crafty. He was also encircled by a legion of faithful bodyguards who would lay down their lives for him. As a result, they had to hire an army as well. Now you can't buy loyalty, but you can buy skill. Peter McAleese, meet Jorge Salquedo. Jorge Salcedo was hired by the Cali Cartel to handle its security operations. Salcedo, who was given the codename Richard by the Cali Cartel, became a key member of the cartel's intelligence and security unit, and typified the sort of smart employee the organization preferred to hire. Salcedo, the son of a former Colombian Army Brigadier General, had studied economics and mechanical engineering in the United States and was proficient in English. He joined the military and became a member of the Cali Brigade where he learned about weapons, communications, and explosives. Salcedo got acquainted with Mario del Basto, the Cali cartel's chief of security, through his ties to the Cali-based 3rd Brigade. Salcedo possessed exceptional abilities, especially computer expertise, and was recruited by the cartel. Salcedo grew to be a close confidant of the Rodriguez brothers. Salcedo planned to bring in a squad of British mercenaries to assassinate Escobar in August 1988. David Tompkins, a British mercenary, was Salcedo's contact. Salcedo traveled to London to meet with Tompkins and his colleague, Robert Peter McAleese, to submit a proposal. Tompkins had been in and out of jail since the 1960s before becoming a mercenary. His mercenary career began in Africa, and he traveled the world in search of excitement, from Afghanistan to Croatia to Uganda, where he was implicated in a conspiracy to assassinate Idi Amin. Under the legendary mercenary leader Colonel Callan, Tompkins became one of the famed Dogs of War, and an explosive specialist in Angola. McAleese served in the British military as a paratrooper and member of the SAS before becoming a mercenary. McAleese also saw a lot of action in Africa. He returned to the United Kingdom after suffering a terrible parachuting accident, where he met Tompkins. Tompkins had been lured into the Colombian Civil War before meeting Salcedo and when he met a Colombian army colonel through a link in the arms trade. The Plan Tompkins was tasked with assembling a squad of mercenaries capable of destroying the FARC insurgent group's headquarters in Colombia. FARC was in a deadly battle with Colombia's drug lords for control of the drug trade at the time. Jose Gonzalo Rodriguez Gauche, a Medellin drug kingpin, was primarily responsible for funding the operation. Tompkins was to be paid around $2,000 each week, with whatever treasures he uncovered at FARC headquarters his to keep. 
Tompkins joined forces with Michalis to assemble a 16-man mercenary force, which he then dispatched to Colombia. The plan was to launch a helicopter strike on Escobar's 7,000-acre private estate, Hacienda Napoles, which is roughly 80 miles from Medellin. When the mercenaries learned Escobar would be at his ranch, they decided to launch the mission. A zoo with exotic animals, a collection of ancient and fancy automobiles, a private airfield, and a bullring was all part of the sprawling estate. Michalis took a reconnaissance flight over the property and agreed that it could be done. The mission was a go. It was an audacious mission. The mercenaries would have to drive three hours from Cali to Hacienda Napoles via the jungle, while the Cali cartel was hard at work tracking Escobar's cell phone's radio signal. A team of spies was stationed in a hideaway overlooking Medellin, attempting to collect Escobar's cell phone transmissions. On May 31, 1989, the spies in Cali received intelligence that Escobar would be celebrating his soccer team's Copa Libertadores de América triumph at Hacienda Napoles. It was the first time in 41 years that a Colombian squad would win the competition. The best laid plans up in flames. A pair of Vietnam-era Huey helicopters were prepped to look like police helicopters. Tompkins and his crew were concerned that one of the Hueys might struggle to transport the commandos and weapons to the drop zone. Gilberto Rodriguez Orwella was adamant that the mission, dubbed Operation Phoenix, be launched by British mercenaries. At 11 a.m., the espionage team arranged for someone to phone Escobar. Escobar's voice had to be heard for the operation to be successful. The four former Cali cartel godfathers who were back in Cali, viewing live news from the site, applauded when the caller confirmed that Escobar was at the property. However, the mission fell into jeopardy. The Huey hauling the large load was running short on gasoline towards the drug zone. Furthermore, the expedition was unable to cope with the terrain and weather. The helicopter crashed because the 8,000-foot mountain range and thick clouds obscured the pilot's view of the range. The pilot died, but Tompkins and Michalee somehow survived. When Cali failed to respond, the two men spent three days traveling out of the bush, avoiding capture and death while being in Escobar territory. Tompkins had only bruises, but Michalis suffered shattered ribs and a damaged back. Tompkins returned to the United Kingdom through Panama in June 1989. The Cali cartel still wanted to assassinate Escobar at Hacienda Napoles, but the ranch was finally taken by Colombia police, and Escobar was unable to visit it. Run, hide, or go ahead. Tompkins was still determined to assassinate Escobar. Tompkins became embroiled in another Get Escobar plan in 1991, when U.S. investigators alleged a cocaine cartel offered him the job. A Vietnam-era fighter plane and 5,000-pound bombs were to be used in the scheme. The operation was detected by U.S. customs authorities in Puerto Rico, who put up an undercover trap in which Tompkins paid over $25,000 to undercover agents in exchange for what he thought would be a shipment of weaponry. Tompkins was tipped off before he was apprehended, and he escaped to the United Kingdom. Tompkins was charged with conspiracy to violate arms export restrictions in the Southern District of Florida in 1994. Michalis avoided difficulties with the police and began training Russian bodyguards in Moscow in the mid-1990s, followed by security employment in Algeria and Iraq. Michalis was free until 2003 when he was apprehended by U.S. Customs at Houston International Airport while attempting to enter the country. Michalis had flown to the United States to undertake survival training classes at Fort Bliss, Texas, with the intention of later traveling to Iraq to assist in the fight against terrorism. Meanwhile, while on the run from the authorities, Pablo Escobar was shot and killed in 1993. We hope you enjoyed today's video. If you enjoyed our video, don't forget to like and subscribe.